Hello folks and today we're going to have a look at the menu system on the Amphibio Multi. Now as you can see I've switched it on, you simply push down and hold the on off button and it scrolls on in a couple of seconds. Now the first thing we're going to look at today is your modes. Now these are your search modes. You'll see that all the settings come in three different bars and we'll talk about all of those in this video. So at the moment, you'll see that I've got three tone in a little blue box. That's the tone system that I'm using. So I've got an iron tone and I've got two target tones, a mid tone for mid conductors and a higher tone for higher conductors. So it's a very simple three tone system. And this is a great all rounder. It's probably the most settled of all of these settings some of the others do give a bit of feedback uh, when you're detecting but there are ways that you can tone that down but they are more powerful programs i find three tones a really nice search setting uh, but you've got loads to play around with so basically when you're in the menu if you just go up and down you can move around between the settings uh, for your searches. Now this is without doing anything else, don't forget. You're not touching anything else. This is as they come straight out the box and they're very, very effective and they give you lots and lots of options. So you've got Gen, which is a kind of all metal search mode. Two tone, exactly what it says on the box. Three tone, as I've just mentioned. And then if you want more splitting of tones, so if you want four tones with three different tones for good conductors, you can have four. You can have five and you can get the machine to split your conducti conductivity le levels into uh, the iron tone and four positive tones. Or you can have 99 tones, which is a sliding scale. Then you've got your beach, your deep and your cash. So 99 tones, you've got a sliding scale where as you go through the conductivity range, you get lots of different tones for each area of conductivity. It's basically going on from five tones and giving you even more. So you've got lots of ways you can make this machine sound. And as I said before, these are quite powerful compared to three tone. Three tone runs the fastest recovery speed. So it's the best one around the trash and on ancient sites. And because it runs a slightly faster recovery speed, that does make it a little bit calmer but it's still got very respectable depth. I really enjoy three tones. So as I was mentioning earlier on, beach, deep and cash. So beach, obviously, as you'd expect for use on the beach. Deep, again, as you'd expect, a deeper search mode. And cash is a, a non-motion mode. So it's old school non-motion. That's for if you're looking for large objects at depth, maybe big groups of coins, that kind of thing. So you've got lots and lots of different search modes and I'm going to show you over here in a moment how you can play around with those a little bit. They are customizable or at least some of them are anyway. But straight out the box you've got really really good choices and you should be able to find something to suit the places where you're detecting and the sounds that you like. So over here now we've got settings. Now if we go into settings just by pressing the settings button. The first one you see is the gain. This is your power level. Now I've got it down on 10 because I'm indoors to do this and obviously I don't want this machine to chatter like mad. Now as you can see when you go into it it gives you a couple of seconds to start making your changes and then it drops straight back into this menu. So this is a straightforward up and down change your search mode uh, you're normally going to find which one you like and you're going to find which one you're happiest with and then you're going to stick with it but it will sit there on your search mode your tones that's where it sits while you're detecting if you want to change your settings you go into settings so we've talked about the gain that's your power level as i say it's only down there because i'm in the house then you've got your discrimination Anybody who knows anything about detectors knows what discrimination is. It's how high you want it to knock out or give the iron tone to certain targets. Standard stuff, your discrimination. So settings, discrimination. And then you've got notch. Most people know what notch is. You can notch out certain groups. So you've got your discrimination for your low 
uh, low conductors for your small iron. If you want to knock out ring pulls and things like that in the US for park hunting, you can take out a certain amount of bars up here that won't show up. The target ID will stay quiet. It's maybe between 50 and 60. So you've got your notch option on this machine in your settings. You've also got notch volume, notch V which will allow you to play around with volumes within Notch. It's another layer if you want it. All these things are only if you want them, don't forget. This is just to show you how many different options you get with the Amphibio Multi. It's a great machine straight out the box, but it does give you lots of options. So back into settings. And now we come down to tone, tone volume, and tone break. Now these are areas where you can play around with these tones. You can change where a certain tone starts and where the next tone comes in in the conductivity range or you can change the volume of certain tones and you can change the pitch of all of them so you can actually suit some of these for your ears so there's lots and lots of things you can do with the tones you really can pick whichever one of these is your favorite and then you can play around with the tones and you can customize them to suit exactly the way you want them to be. Very, very good feature for those people who want it. The threshold, as you can see, it jumps over the threshold in three tone because you only use the threshold in gen mode. So if I go back to gen, I should now, there you go, I can get a threshold. So you can hear that. You set a background threshold when you're in Gen, which is the all metal mode, but you only use the threshold in that one. Hence the reason why when I'm in three tones and I go into settings, it jumps over it. So threshold is a specialized one for the all metal mode. And then you've got ISAT. Now ISAT is quite an interesting one. It's a kind of background by the way, you go left to right for up and down. You don't go up and down, you go left and right. Um, you soon get the hang of it. ISAT is like a background to discrimination, really. It's if you've got soil that's got a lot of feedback, if you're struggling to get the machine to settle down using the discrimination and the gain, then as a secondary way of doing it, you can change the ISAT level. Now, putting up the ISAT can... Uh, lead to making it a little bit harder on some of the trickier targets it's a bit of a cancel out so generally speaking most people like to leave the eye set I sat on one or even zero I normally leave it on one but on certain soils if your gain and disc aren't helping to calm down and your ground balance as well I sat will help so there are times when you will need to put that up but it shouldn't be too often and most people like to leave it down there the manual will tell you more about that but it's a tell it's, it stands for i think it's intelligent self adjustment uh, but it's basically it's there if you need to move it but your machine is more optimistic on targets if it's lower and slightly less optimistic generally if it's higher but there will be times when you need to put it up but most of the time gain and disc and ground balance will give you all that you want. So there you go, just in those two bars there with this machine, we get an awful lot. We've got lots and lots of search modes. We've got our power, we've got discrimination to knock out the things we don't want. We've got notch, so if you want to take out a certain group of things further up the scale, as well as discriminate in the low conductors, the iron, you can notch out as well. You've got notch volume, you've got tone, tone volume and tone break. So you can play around with the start and the stop points of the tones. You can make each tone sound a little higher or lower. You really can customize this machine to sound the way you want and to work the way you want with your search modes. Obviously, bearing in mind the tone options are only going to work in the tone modes, but that obviously stands to reason. Okay, so there you go. There's the first bar and the second bar. Lots and lots you can do with this machine, just in those two. Now let's have a look at the other side, and let's have a look at the options. Frequency, you've got 20 kilohertz. A very, very good frequency for going after the small stuff. There's not a great difference in, uh, in, in these frequencies, and there aren't on any machine. Some people make the false assumption that 
if you change frequency, it's almost like having a different machine. It isn't. It's a slight variance. 14 kilohertz will still hit small stuff. It's just that 20 just has a slight edge on some tricky targets. And then down at the other end of the spectrum, you've got 5 kilohertz, which is slightly better again for larger, deeper objects. But it is only slight. As I say, some people make the mistake of thinking that your frequency almost turns it into a completely different machine. It doesn't but it does make a slight difference and it is handy to have it. What I find on certain fields is that sometimes a certain frequency just doesn't like the ground or there might be EMI around and for all the other things that you can do, sometimes just searching in a different frequency can make the machine a lot, lot calmer. So it does have that advantage as well. But having three frequencies is a good thing. Volume speaks for itself. Brightness speaks for itself. That's just the screen. Vibrate speaks for itself. If you want this machine to vibrate over a target, it will vibrate for you. Very, very good for people who have got hearing difficulties. Then you've got ID depth. Now you can change this if you want, but it's all to do with your depth indication and your ID. It's got three settings and personally, I would recommend you leave it in the middle for diddle. They do say you can change the ID depth so it's a little more accurate. Uh, but personally, really, tones are what metal detectors are all about. And playing around with ID depth, really very, very specialised. When would you really need to do that? That's up to you. But it's there if you want to do it. Tracking. Tracking is part of the ground balance. Now, tracking will literally allow your machine to track the ground. And if you've got ground where the ground balance value changes a lot, it will track it and it will change the ground balance as you're going along. So that's what tracking is. Um, that's quite specialised as well, to be perfectly honest. We'll talk more about ground balance in a moment, actually. Right, back into options. Frequency shift. Very, very simple. Uh, within each frequency, you've got three different variances. So two is your middle for diddle, then you've got three and one. All this is, is it's not changing the frequency, it's just making a micro adjustment within your chosen frequency. So we're still in, we're still in 14 kilohertz there, but what we're doing is within 14 kilohertz, we're making ever such a slight adjustment either way. Um, but it's still 14. It'll be 14 point something or 13.9 or whatever it is. But it's right on the button almost. But the idea of that, again, is to cancel out EMI. So the idea is if you're getting electric pylon interference or maybe you're getting interference from another metal detector, you can shift your frequency within 14 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz, 20, whichever one you're using. You can make a little micro adjustment and sometimes it will knock out a lot of what's around you. FD save, if you've made changes to any of these and you want to keep them, put it in FD save and it's there the next time you want it. That's all that is. It's just somewhere to save any changes that you've made. So you might set your machine up for a field. You might go into three tones. You might change some of the tone breaks. You might put in some notch. It might work exactly how you want for a certain part that you're on. And you don't want to forget all those settings. Put them in FD save and they'll be there next time you go to that field and you want to use them. Wireless, exactly what it says on the tin. Wireless. So <laughs> that one again speaks for itself. Whoops, I've just moved the machine. There we go. Okay, now ground balance. That's over here. Ground balance 90. See this here, pump coil? It's asking me to pump the coil. Obviously, I'm not going to pump it in the house. Let me come out of that for a minute. Ground balance, uh, if I keep my finger down, if I go through the other options, I'll talk about it. I won't go into ground balance again because you saw what just happened, but you saw it come up there. That's where you get the messages about what's going on when you're using ground balance. But you've got different options. You've got a preset 90, which when you go into your options, you'll be in preset 90. 
I find for most of my fields that works fine. Now you can manually adjust that. If you want your ground balance on 88, you can literally up and down and you can manually change the ground balance value. Or, as it was just asking me to do, you can pump the coil and it will move for you. Or you can put it in tracking, which we spoke about earlier, where it will track the ground and make changes for you. So you've got lots and lots of options within the ground balance as well. You can manually adjust it. You can pump the coil and get the machine to give you a ground reading and then detecting that ground reading value. Or you can leave it on the preset 90, which, as I say, for many, many places, does a perfectly good job. There's lots and lots of preset ground balance metal detectors out there that do a great job. And the Amphibio will do a great job in the preset 90 as well. But you've got lots of ways to adjust it if you want to do that. Some people say pumping the coil and getting the machine to read the ground balance will give you a little bit more depth. And sometimes it can calm the machine down if the soil's a little bit tricky. So you can do an automatic ground balance. You can manually change the number if you want to. Or you can leave it in the preset or you can track the ground. Personally, my own preference is, is to leave it in the preset 90 or pump the coil and let the Amphibio Multi read the ground and set it for me. Those are the two that I like to use. In the middle here, you've got a nice big display for your number. So whatever tones you're working in, your number value is going to come up as well as having your tones in your headphones. By the way, the headphones for the Amphibio Multi are absolutely excellent. They're one of the best sets of headphones I've ever tried. They really are lovely. So you get a nice big ID number in there. And obviously, when you're going through all your options, it shows you the value in nice big numbers as well. So very, very easy to make adjustments with this machine. You really have got a nice big piece of screen, nice piece of real estate to see what you're doing. Very, very easy. And then down there, you've got your depth meter. Remember, we spoke about ID depth and being able to play around with things like that. Well, you've got your depth meter there. Again, to be honest, all metal detectors are only guessing at depth because depending on the size of an object, um, they can be fooled. So it's only a guesstimation of the machine. I don't tend to pay a lot of attention to depth meters on any metal detectors, but it's there if you want it, and it can come in handy for certain scenarios. And then you've got your mineral bar. If this is going up and you've got lots of bars going up in here, then you know you might have mineralization in your ground and you might need to consider that. But if it stays low, don't worry about it. If it does start going high, you might want to pump the coil. So if you're in preset 90 and this starts coming up and your machine seems a little bit unstable, that's the time to start playing around with the ground balance in earnest because you've got bad soil. So that's all that's doing. It's really a bad soil, mineral soil indicator. And then, of course, you've got your battery. There you go, three bars left on this. I've been playing around with this quite a bit, as you can see. So the battery life's gone down a bit. You get loads of hours. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but you're going to go out searching all day long with this machine, and it's not going to be a problem. Um, plenty of power in the battery. This has been used and played with, taken out in the field, and I've been practicing this demo. Still got lots and lots of life left in the battery. So there you go. The Amphibio Multi is a machine that gives you a lot of things you can change if you want to change them. You don't have to. You can turn it on, three tones, preset ground balance, you can detect. Or in any of the others, really. But don't forget what I said. Three tones is the faster recovery speed, better around the iron. It's the more stable of the choices. Some of the others can be a bit chatty, but that's because they've got a bit more power under the bonnet. Um, so they're designed to be that way. But there are things you can do, again, if you want to use these and they seem a bit chatty. You've got the ISAT, you've got your gain and your disc, and you've got your, you've got your ground balance and things that you can change to try and calm them down, like you do with a lot of detectors. But as you can see, you've got plenty of things you can change. You can change the way it sounds. You can change the notch and the disc and the gain, which is pretty standard on most decent detectors. But you've got all kinds of stuff. You've got all kinds of good stuff, lots and lots of search modes, and then you've got plenty of options down here as well. Three frequencies. I do like machines that give you the option to change the frequency entirely. It can be very handy um, and all the other standard stuff. So as you can see, plenty of stuff on a nice big screen, 
very very easy to see very very easy to navigate doesn't take you long to get used to these it really doesn't um, so you soon get the hang of it um, very clear very easy to look at very user friendly once you've played around with it for a little while so there you go folks that is the screen the menu on the Nocta Macro Amphibio Multi.